Um, Puerto Rico has always been sort of a crossroads um, in, throughout its whole history, even the, the pre-Columbian history even, uh, where um, the native people were an agricultural people, as far as we know, of course, with this very, there's not uh, as much left about their culture as there are in places like Peru and Mexico and so on. But what uh, we were able to, we've been able to find out is that they were mostly an agricultural people. They used to fish and, uh, and then they grew crops for food. Um, and then there were the uh, Caribbean people who were part of the Arawak community of, 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 of natives of the Caribbean basin. Uh, and the Caribes were more warfare, warfaring, and uh, they were the people of the sea, basically, and their canoes and so on. And so, um, but, but they, in, you know, they inter, they exchanged <laughs> uh, DNA. Um, and then when the Spaniards came along because of uh, Puerto Rico's location, right out the, the last of the um, greater Antilles and in the entrance to the Caribbean Sea, um, it became a, a center of, you know, the Spaniards took over and then they would bring soldiers and merchants and so on. Um, and they would come from all over. Um, it, one of the things that, that when I began to research <laughs> my own history in Puerto Rico, um, it, it was how, just how diverse those communities were, you know, we imagine that only the Españoles, you know, when I, I, actually this morning I was listening to a recording I did with my mom about her history, right, and, and so she, I would, I asked her, well, what do you remember about the place that she lived in? She says, well, los Españoles owned everything, and so, so to her, only the Spaniards were there, <laughs> but in fact, that is not the truth. That's not the truth. Um, that in fact, it was once the uh, the New World became a place that people could go to. People came from all over, and so uh, Puerto Rico was no different that way. Um, and um, I, I recently <laughs> had my DNA test that I was stunned. I am not an Española. My mother always said we were Españoles on her <laughs> side. We are Portuguese. My family was Portuguese. I had no idea. Um, I don't know what that means, you know, in terms of anything else, but uh, it, was, it was a surprise. It was a surprise. And then the more I read, the more I realize that people came from, the, a, a lot of um, Irish people came to, to the New World, but many of them came to the Antilles. And, um, and they, they founded dynasties there. Um, so so it's, it's always been very, very, very diverse. Of course, then when the Africans are, are dragged over there, there's a whole other community that's added to that. But even, even those, those peoples came from different parts of Africa. Um, and so it's, it's incredibly multiracial, multicultural, and multilingual. Um, when I listened to my mom, my mom passed away uh, three years ago and she was um, 87. So she, she, she did, did not live in the 19th century, but she sounded like someone of the 19th century. By the time that she was at that age, when you kind of start sounding the way you did when you were a little kid, um, I, was, I was listening to it just this morning, and her accent is very different from a Puerto Rican today because the Spanish that she heard was different from the Spanish that we hear today. So that kind of diversity is something that we don't give credit to um, our ancestors or the places that we come from, um, but that's a, that's a reality of, of the way it happened. You know, we, we're just this huge mixture of many, many people from many different parts of the world who all came together in this one little spot.